Welcome guys to this week's episode of Heaven Bottle Tones with me, your podcast host, Tony Evans. I hope you enjoyed the last couple of weeks of diving into Maiden. I really hope you enjoyed uh, Past the Fall that was played on the end of last week's episode. If you haven't got all the way to the end of the episode, um, do go back. Skip it, you don't want to hear me talking, that's fine. But um, have a listen to this young guy's music. Um, it is fantastic. I'm looking forward to getting him on uh, in sometime in um, mid to late Feb uh, onto the show with a chat. That'll be real, a real you know, sort of bonus for us. I really enjoyed the show. He reached out to me and asked me um, to help him promote some of his work and have a chat. And he's listening. He's a he's a fan of the show. I thought, why not? Yeah, I love uh, helping people for that, particularly musicians, and I really enjoy the music as well. So it was really really good. Speaking of that, this is what this episode is all about. Um, this is about discovery, right? Um, and the voyage of discovery. What and why, where and how we go from the future now. Um, because sadly, um, I didn't get a chance to mention this in the last couple of episodes because I didn't really think it was appropriate. Um, we lost, the world lost a couple of wonderful performers recently. Jeff Beck at the age of 78 and uh, Crosby, David Crosby, um, I think he was 80, 84. Um, now these are, they may not be your thing, you may not, like, like, you may not, Tony, I put my teeth back in, you may not enjoy Crosby, Stills and Nash, you might not, you might not enjoy Jeff Beck or um, white, you know, or 60s um, British Invasion Blues, you might not. But they're still very, very important people in the history of uh, of the 20th century and this music, and very, very important um, to a lot of us of my generation, particularly Jeff Beck. So this was prompted on a conversation as well that I had with my darling wife, as I mentioned last week, walking back from the pub, you know, two sheets to the wind, um, or four sheets to the wind, whatever the term is, you know, drunk, let's be honest, just just drunk uh, well not drunk that's wrong I just a couple of cocktails and a couple of dark ales in and a couple of wines and you know happens isn't it and we were chatting about music which we which I like to do and she listens because God bless her she's a good woman um, and I was saying how I really didn't like Ozzy's new albums and got into this big conversation about me being uh, a dinosaur and what happens if when they go, who you can listen to, what's happening, and she knows that I have a big modern. I like I listen to all stuff, um, particularly as having to do the review page for Metal Ruse. I'm also going to be interviewing uh, Michael from Metal Ruse very soon as well. That'll be a good one. Um, uh, you know, you, you do. I have got. I do. Yes, I have one eye over my shoulder at the past with a warm glow, and why an, another eye on the future with a, a, a sense of uh, anticipation um, at what's to come. I don't feel dread at all. I feel I think that the future is, is very bright and wonderful when it comes to the music scene. Maybe not humanity, but that's not my domain, is it? So, where am I going with this conversation? Is what I'm thinking is, where are we going? How are we discovering? And what are we discovering? Um, and I'll give you some of the stuff that of what I'm doing right now to try and be relevant and keep relevant as you have to do as you get older as we age sadly you you, tr you have to try and be relevant because there's a beautiful fact that a man's hairstyle and dress sense up to the age of 40 will never change unless you come some kind of you know peacock but most men 40 onwards what you look like at 40 is probably what you look like when you're 80 right whereas women tend to be more fluid um, and more open to change so we try to be more relevant and but also not forgetting and um, enjoying our past right it is what it is the past is what it is you can't take it away you can't um, retrofit other things into it however much the woke world wants to do so um, you can't retrofit and change things that don't appear and work to your gender anyway I'm looking at you Harry and Megan you know what I'm talking about uh, ooh controversy um, no what I'm trying to say is 
is that we have to try and keep relevant. And I'm doing that. I, as you will know if you follow me enough, that I now have a, a Twitter, a Twitter account. I never had a Twitter account. I could never understand. To be honest, I could never understand it. I tried following John Lydon, got in a mess with it, and um, got stuck and didn't know how to go any further, so I left it. And that's the truth. Um, I have a TikTok account. Now, so it takes a lot of time, I've noticed, with TikTok. When you go on there, like with Instagram, um, because I'm a white male, uh, or just male in general, I should imagine, I don't know, I'm a white male, just a male in general, I get tits and ass. Tits and ass. It took me ages. Don't get me wrong. It's nice if you want to flash your bits at me now and again. I'm not going to say no. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a heathen. But I. I would. I want. I go on there to listen. I want to watch music stuff because that's me. Music and and you know making music interviews, watching bass bits, guitar parts, all that kind of stuff is what I like on there. And now I've finally got the algorithm working my way. There's a bit too much Family Guy in there for my liking. I did that to try and break the rhythm and, it, and the algorithm, and it got stuck with too much of it. And then I got a load of earth, flat earthing earth stuff. The fuck did that come from? I never solicited that at all. Anyway, so where was I covered? Yeah, so I'm now using TikTok, and I am discovering amazing musicians. Now I know that Instagram was often the way for that, and YouTube was that way for that for a little while. But the thing with YouTube is, it doesn't come and say, "Hey, you like this." You have to search on YouTube, um, and when you find it, then you can sort of find other avenues. But the wonderful thing about Instagram and TikTok, even though, you know, you can do all the, I don't go on the social media's crap you want, right? You can do all that you want. We can't run away from it. It is here. It is evil. It's innocuous. It has its, it's in, in, in innocuous. It's, um, it's, it, you know, insidious. We know that. We know that. We, we acquiesce to it, don't we? Right? We kowtow to the way that we, the world is no longer, um, you know, a band is no longer uh, a two months away by um, fan mail. It's now instant information about the things you love and want to read about. Is that good? Yes. Is it bad? Yes. Equal portions. Understand it. This isn't a tirade on social media. This is just my mention of it right now. So TikTok, Instagram, brilliant. Once it knows, the algorithm knows that you like watching uh, Pino Palladino playing bass solo parts or Peter Gabriel um, vocal tracks that have been cut back or someone uh, reviewing um, an album or a single, you get that coming at you like a big, hot, steaming turd, don't you? You get it at you. And you have to filter through the garbage that is flowing in front of your eyes. When you do that, though, you do end up with some absolutely stonkingly amazing stuff. You just do. I come across um, recently a wonderful, wonderful blues singer, guitarist. Now, if you look, if you go to my Facebook page and scroll down, you will find um, this particular artist that I'm talking about. Okay, her name is Jackie Venson. She's from Texas. She, a guitarist, wonderful vocalist, all blues, right? It's all blues, Texas blues and all sorts of blues, but it's blues. Um, she has a voice that absolutely captivated me, completely, utterly captivated me. And her um, her guitar parts, her, 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 her nuance, I use the word nuance too much, don't I? But you know what I mean? The, the, the sophistication of the blues that she's playing is so amazing. It's so not tortured and held within the 12 bars, you know, the one air in E and that's where you get in. Uh, it, it, there is complicated guitar chord structures. There are beautiful guitar solo parts. She sings along to the guitar solos. And I was watching a really great, um, again on TikTok, see, um, thing uh, uh, with... Um, Guthrie Govan, who is an amazing guitarist, I've mentioned him before on the show. Amazing good guitarist who's with um, plays with Stephen Wilson. Played with Stephen Wilson. He's got his own, his own solo stuff. The Aristocrats, that sort of stuff. Really proggy, um, but he is just. He says that he likes to sing the solos in his head. 
each note he sings so that when he portrays when it comes out his fingers onto the fretboard it's like a song it's singing and she does the same thing and it's just captivating and what's amazing about it is it's all trapped in these one to two minute videos so you 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 do delve deeper in and you can instantly tell the artist and as what i've done i've said to her instantly react and say to them in a positive or negative way remember you know not everything is sunshine happiness and flowers in a field and and and, and sunlight in the hair thing is it right some of it's um not to your taking now please people out there please 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 if you don't like someone's piece of music if you don't like it and it's not your thing you do not have the right to abuse that musician about their music now that's why i don't come on here and be negative i mean there are bands i'd love to be negative about ghost i'd love to tear apart metallic i'd love to have a go at um new metal yes i'd love to stick the knife in but i'm not i'm not going to because i didn't bear my soul i didn't wake up in the morning and spend eight hours 10 to 12 hours of my day opening up my soul to the world and i don't mean you know you're telling everyone your secrets i mean showing the world your talent is very very hard because none of us and i don't even believe even the most narcissistic um tit on this planet even the most kardashian of people even the most mega marco of people could honestly say that they are happy with absolutely everything they put out i mean you know i'm about to play again for the first time in you know, almost 20 years with a, with a band, um, I say a band, a drummer and a guitarist, friends of mine. And I'm really scared about it because I don't want to, I've got to bear myself. I've got to say, this is why talent, this is what I can do. It was the same with the podcast. You really have to understand if some of you out there listen to this right now, go, you're fucking dickhead. I wish you would shut up. That's your choice to do so. Now, you can reach out and tell me that. No one has done that. And I'm very thankful that I don't have to listen to that because I have the kind of soul that will go, that's it, I'm not doing any more. Uh, nah, I probably would for a little while. Um, but it's not our right to do so. It's our right to think it. It's our right to to go, yeah, look, you know what? I don't like it. But is that open-minded of us? Is that free of us? Is that really helpful to that musician, those musicians, that artist? that author, that actor, is it? No, um, because they've made that decision to do so. I think, I, like I tell them, my review team guys, be proactive, not reactive, yeah? Be productive, so, you know, be, be constructive, not reactive. So if you don't like something, constructively tell someone, you know? You don't just turn around and say, hey, you bunch of cunts, you're already cracking shit. Um, sorry for the C word, it just popped out. You know what I mean? You, you, you'd say, hey, look, really didn't like that album, but I really enjoyed the middle eight in that. I thought that was a great moment there. The same way I said to Karen about Ozzy, I was really, I mean, it was, I was inebriated, but I was being really rude about his later stuff, and he genuinely wants to make that, ru sorry, I was going to say rubbish then, see? It's all subconscious. He genuinely wants to make that music. And if that's what he wants to make, and that's what he thinks is the right thing to make, I want him to keep making it. Like if he feels relevant and keeps enjoying it, and wants to do an album of ballads, that's up to him. You know? But, so I'm saying, so back backtrack. So you can, you, can, you can relate to the artist straight away now, and get instant gratification. You can be one touch point away from your heroes, which is an amazing thing. So that's what's brilliant about this TikTok. You, you you grab what you want, you listen to it, and then you go off and you consume it in a larger amount. Right, you go and get the album, you buy the t-shirt, you go to the tour, you promote them on your socials, you go to the YouTube page and leave a comment. You it, it it's it's the the world has opened up so dramatically i can't tell you i if you told young as i said this before if you told um 16 year old tony when he was walking across the railway tracks home and through wimbledon you know from the squat that he was living in 
at the time, 17 year old Tony, sorry. And while he's listening to Venom's uh, At War with Satan, if you would be talking to, you know, members of the band in 30 years' time, I would have told you that I would have, I would have laughed. I would have laughed. If you told him that 16 year old Tony, that he would be talking to Tony Martin, his hero um, uh, uh, of Black Sabbath, in an interview, which I did, and you can go back and listen to on Metal Ruse on Spotify and on on my on my show. There's a link to it on one of my shows. Um, if you had said that, I, again, I would laugh to you, but this is the wonderful thing. We all have this ability to reach out and, and do great things, and this is what the social stuff does. And I own sidetracking, but it's, what I mean is this is where I'm discovering my new music. I'm getting it because I've got friends. I've got a good friend circle that just say, hey, Tone, listen to this. Hey, Tone, listen to this. Hey, Tone, listen to this. And I get given stuff to listen to and rightly or wrongly some of it is awful some of it's amazing most of it's brilliant um and because my friends and my and my um colleagues enjoy it i'm going to make an effort to enjoy it all right that's not saying that every day i say if i say this piece of music is amazing like last week when i played um that's the, the single beholden at the end of the show by past the fall if you don't like it fine i loved it but if you don't like it that's that's perfectly fine. It's in your court, right? Um, you don't have to tell me that. You can tell me you like it. I'd love some feedback on it, but it's up to you. Anyway, this is going to be a rather um, a shorter episode this week. I usually try to record an hour, but uh, I'm a bit time constrained over the next day or so. So I'm gonna I'm going to have a break now. I mean, I say that now, I don't know, but the second half might go for another 25 minutes. Who bloody knows with me? You never know. Anyway, I will talk to you after the ads. Uh, enjoy some consumerism, you know, buy, sell, sell, buy, buy, sell, buy, insurance, um, prostate issues, no, my, my age, <laughs> anyway, that's enough of me, so let's, um, I'm going to go and get a fresh cup of tea, because I need to, and we'll talk on the other side about um, um, discovering um, how to, what, what I've discovered what I've discovered this year um, or last year sorry and uh, and uh, where where I'm going from that talk to you soon guys bye for now So back with you guys. Um, discovery in the voyage of, of of interesting things, right? Into the murky, wonderful world of the internet. Um, it is, as I said before, it's interesting because we don't discover music in the same way as we used to. We don't have radio, sadly, that's on regularly. Um, you know, we used to have the uh, the. Um, the radio rock rock on radio one the rock show um, with Vance we used to have um, top of the pops we, we used to have over here in Australia we had um, Rage which is a late night um, music video magazine on the ABC we used to have Countdown here I never I wasn't here for Countdown I came after countdown had finished but there was countdown here which is a ma massive massive thing my wife and australians of her generation would, be, would have been would have lived on it um you know we had mtv we had all sorts of music music magazines on tv in the uk um punk ones scar ones blues ones you know there was always something going on there was always documentaries there was always a way of, in, of you could walk into a record shop and it would have a latest releases and you'd go oh, okay what's that that's that and it would and it would give you like a, a listening recommendation if you like meatloaf you're like this blah 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 pretty much like in the bookshop now um you get that sort of thing but so we don't have that but the algorithms uh, we have do have and they do i mean you know all there was always an agenda with these programs because record labels are going to push 
product, aren't they? This is not an altruistic situation. Um, programs need to stay alive through revenue, and revenue is raised by record labels, and the bigger record label you are, the more revenue you get. And this is another thing that's brilliant about the social media discovery and the boom of discovery through social media is that that middleman is gone. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing because without PR people and PR machines, um, we get um, our heads filled with Ed Sheeran and you know um, Coldplay and and stuff like that, which you know should only be ever used uh, in as a form of torture. I'm sure that had the had in the Second World War the uh, the um, Axis power had Ed Sheeran and Coldplay, they could have probably won. Um, you know, I'll give in, not yellow again, I'll give in, not that ginger head prat, not again. Um, oh no, he's coming with his acoustic guitar. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, I'm just joking, all joking aside, I, you know, taste is taste, right? But what I'm saying is, is agendas, right? So, the the without you know we with the, with the media with the social medias that we have um yes there were still agendas there were still big labels that will push stuff there were still algorithms i'm sure there's very smart people out there doing very smart things with numbers so that we unfortunately see you too in our feed it happens right um it does but at the same time we have the power people i'm putting my fist in the air we have the power people to override that don't we because we can swipe up swipe left swipe right delete whatever like not unlike whatever to the point where your algorithm knows what you like um a funny story with my my spotify algorithm got sort of butchered um a little a little bit recently maybe a year or so ago it was christmas time and I was just really wanted to listen to Billy Bragg. I really love Billy Bragg. I always have done, always will do. Um, really excited to listen. His new album came out and I was listening to it. Now, Billy's got this um, a very me- varied and wonderful career. He's, a, you know, he's an anarchistic um, street poet from the east end of London. But he also likes, you know, he likes... Uh, protest music he's a people's person right and so some of that stuff that he's interested in and influenced and he's done an album called uh, Mermaid um, Mermaid Hotel Uh, hang on a moment because blank Tony went blank Mermaid Avenue not Mermaid Hotel sorry and then he did a fantastic album which I saw him on Shine a Light um, which was um where was it? Shine a light. Am I right? Shine a light. Yeah, shine a light. Um, which was like a Mermaid Avenue, Mermaid Hotel. You know, I mean, it w- it was never my kind of thing. I don't like protest music. That's American protest music. It just never sort of did it for me. But he, it was basically this sort of like country style sort of stuff. It was more yeah. A wonderful, wonderful, I mean, brilliant, um, brilliant album. I scratch my head there. Can you hear that on the mic? Sorry, guys. Um, I'm getting sidetracked, so my brain went over. I was trying to think of the name of the bloody tour. Anyway, though, so where I was coming from was I was listening to his, his, his oeuvre, his back catalogue, and I was minding my own business, and it went, I went into the garden to do stuff and forgot to press stop on the player came back in and suddenly I've got country and or western music playing out of my speakers and fuck me if I could not shake that off of my every time uh, uh, an album went to stopped that thing I, I got country music every time I played Billy and let it run through and I wasn't thinking country music and I it was like someone had hijacked my um my uh, 
my, my algorithm. And I'm not, you know, I said before, you should never, you should never criticize and, and, and be like that. You shouldn't be that kind of person. But I felt, I just, I've always had a visceral dislike for country music. Uh, all forms of it. My father loved it. Um, I loathe it. He would um, wear the, you know, Stetson and the blue jacket with his mate. And I mean, he, he was always wanted to be a cowboy, my dad. I mean, my dad was born, he turns 90 next month, this is in February. Um, he, you know, he loved country, country music, country, Western movie, Western movies. I and mean, I love Western movies, but you know, that uh, aside, um, I'm not going to stand in line and put my fingers in my pockets and shout, yee-haw, now am I? Um, this is the way it is. If you like that, baby, I'm sure people listening to this are not big country fans, so it doesn't. I'm not going to offend anyone, I don't think. Anyway, where was I going from that? Algorithms, yes. So your algorithm knows, right? You can't, but you can manipulate it. I got it back. I just started playing a lot of workers' playtime and um, best of stuff from him, and it, it sort of cleared that up. So we we have control of our discoveries and how we discover. Um, an artist now, amazingly, can cheaply, um, effectively uh, uh, reach their audience. Now, uh, older people like myself, and I'm in the older category, um, are not all of us are savvy when it comes to this stuff, and I'm not, I'm just not. I mean, what? I've only just gone to the TikToks, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm up with the homies, right? I'm, I'm there, right? Um, you can, and so, and so the older bands may struggle and still need the older systems, but they're not looking to reach out and suddenly get an audience of 3 million 25 year olds, are they? Or 20 somethings. They're, they're trying, they're just, they're happy to keep their audience the way they are. And if they get to play a live gig and there's a lot of young guys at the front, well, so be it. The music lives on, but they're not going to hunt it down. Because most of the time they've done their bit, done their thing and moved on, or they're happy where they are. But modern, um, forward-thinking younger bands and some of the older bands are using these medias. So we can discover so much stuff. And we can stuff it quickly and, and, and we can consume it without outlay of big money as I've talked to you before I think that we can now you know for an out of 14 I pay 14 Australian dollars a month I don't know that's expensive it's equivalent to about 28 pounds a month um, for Spotify because it's what it's 50 to 50 pence to the dollar um, yeah so at the moment anyway it will change, of course, but um, yeah, that, that so it, you know, I'm not sure if that's expensive. I don't know how much it is in the UK or even in the US, but where it is here, I find it very affordable. Um, let's say with iTunes, whatever platforms you want to use, there are high fidelity ones now. Um, you can use you, I mean, YouTube itself has um, has a, a music thing now, so does Amazon. They've all got them, um, and I don't fear. I don't worry about the money that the band is not getting or getting from streaming. I'm more worried about the amount of exposure they get. So for me, it's just an exposure tool. And yeah, it's some brilliant stuff. Like I said, um, Jackie Benson was a really big hit for me. Um, I come across, and I'm, they're an older band, and I wish I'd really wish I'd sort of got them earlier and it's a, a British death black death metal band extreme band called Deep Profundus I come across them on the socials you know um, uh, um, Aussie bands like werewolves things like that they, they just appear I don't make any yawn sorry oh hit the mic with my record with my cup I've done it in this while have I it's good enough hmm ASMR, mm, cold tea. I do love cold tea. I really do. But anyway, that's basically it, guys. I just wanted to say, you know, um, you can discover stuff and some stuff might change your world. Um, be open-minded. If it comes across it and you go, I'm not sure, how hard is it and how offensive is it to have a listen? Yeah, if you do too much of it. <laughs> you will get your algorithm affected um, and that's no fault of mine unfortunately you can't blame me if suddenly you've got 
paramore blaring out your speakers when you were not ready for it. Um, I do. Do I wish we had um, the old school music magazines back online uh, uh, on TV, music magazine programs and radio shows and top of the pops? And yeah, I do. Um, it's an old man's thing to say it, and I'm an old man, so I'm going to say it. I don't care. I do miss it. I do miss the um, collective um, cultural um, memory that people of my generation have. I do miss that the, the most important thing in your life. It didn't matter if it wasn't your football team, it wasn't your, um, it wasn't your homework or your school. It wasn't anything. It was making sure that you were in front of that big, old, radiating death trap of a machine TV that you've, you know, blaring radioactive radioactive, um, uh, rays at you, sat in front of that thing with one terrible crackly mono speaker, um, desperately waiting for the single you love to come on so you could watch your band play. And usually you're quite disappointed, weren't you? Because, you know, they talk over it or you'd be right. You know, always happened with me because it was my music that I listened to was not mainstream. You get to the end, and it'd be the end song on top of the pops, and they'd roll the credits over and cut it short. And you're like, what the f-? f? Like, I remember there's a song called Camouflage, all right? Um, now, that one, I was absolutely, um, I was absolutely, like, just addicted to, it was by Stan Ridgeway, and it came out in 1986, so I was 13. And uh, off his third, off his uh, third single, off his album, of his do- de- debut album, um, and I just, oh, I was like, I loved it. It was, it was. It, you get a chance, do YouTube it. Um, it's a fantastic single. It's not heavy by any means, guys. I'm not saying it is. Um, it's just a brilliant, written story, an addictive um, piece of music. And I had the 12 inch. Well, I got the 12 inch. I saved up for it. But it was on top of the pops because it got to something like number twenty-four or something, and it went to the end. And uh, and it's a there's a great bit in it, right? It goes whoa, camouflage, and he sort of does that story. He talks about a big marine, and it's like a written sort of spoken song, and he cut it. I remember being so pissed, so pissed. So that side, there were some bad sides to it. But I take them. I'd bring them back. If you brought them back, I'd take every damn bad side to every one of those music magazines. The Tube was an absolute cracker of it. You know, alternative music. Where else could you see alternative music? Because most of the time, on top of the pops, it was um, your your Spandau ballets and your you know your haircut 100s and your ABCs, which is fine. Great music. Really love Spandau ballet, and I actually really like um, haircut 100. But you 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 know what I mean. So if you wanted the alternative side of life, you had to wait and go to the Channel 4 where it was on, um, you know, or late night uh, with Jimmy Vance, late night on uh, the Radio Rock show on Friday night on Radio 1. Um, you know, I remember sitting there and listening to Marillion uh, were doing their Clutching at Straws tour and they were playing at the um, um, Wembley Arena. I couldn't get tickets. I couldn't get a ticket. It sold out. Um, but it, it was on the radio. And I was sitting in front of my stereo with my fingers on the record button on my tape deck to record that live gig. Now, these things, again, ain't going to happen. Because now, you'd have to pay for the streaming. You'd, you know, it's all uh, monetization of their, of their content. Um, but, uh, you know, that is what it is. That's the modern world we live in. As there is no way of actual making money on physical records anymore, they've got to make money somehow. And if that's why they do it, that's the way they do it. I'm all cool. And if I love the band, I'll pay the money. You do, don't you? If you love it, you pay it. Simple as that. You really do. Um, but, yeah, as I said, would I have them back? Yeah, I would. I'd love to have my culture. My, I mean, it, I, it sounds like I'm just rose-tinting things, but it's the truth, guys. Um, each one of you out there of a certain age, if you're older than 30, maybe even 35... A bit older, maybe. Of oh, course, if you're older than, if you're 40 and onwards, just say that. You will know in your heart of hearts what I'm talking about. That moment where you just, you know, 
I remember um, Iron Maiden being, I remember where I was, when Iron Maiden got to number one with um, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter, Take Your Daughter to the Slaughter. I was in an ex-girlfriend's house, posh, posh house in North London, very posh. And um, I had very long hair and her parents didn't like me for it. And we were sitting on the sofa watching Top of the Pops and lo and behold, number one Iron Maiden. I was absolutely stoked. Thrilled is an understatement. But the look on their faces, and I remember the, the dad going, what, how could this rubbish be number one? And there's me looking at him thinking, what? So, you know, um, Celine Dion gets to number one and that's perfectly fine. You know, some, you know, awful rubbish that's just, it's gone today, forgotten tomorrow is number one, but that's perfectly fine. Anyway, you know, we have those moments, but it was delicious to me. I thought it was wonderful because it pissed them off and I loved it. Anyway, I've spoken enough for this episode this week. Slightly shorter one this week, sorry guys. Um, I know I like to usually do sort of 50 minutes, but uh, I've got... I am uh, very, very busy these, these next few days um, preparing to go overseas. Um, so lots to do. I hope you enjoyed that. I just wanted to say that, hey, you know, streaming is not a dirty word and it is the best way of discovering stuff. Um, use all the platforms. Use them well. Don't get yourself caught in an algorithm you don't want to be in. Um, reach out to the artist because you can. Be positive. Be um proactive, pre-constructive, and I don't, telling someone their shit is not constructive, telling them to fuck off is not constructive, it may be constructive to your soul, it might, you may feel better when you do it, but it's not helping anyone, is it now, so um, just just be, try and find a positive spin on it, always try and find a positive spin, even on stuff you don't like, there's got to be somewhere, something in that musical product that you've got in between your ears, or on your record deck, or or wherever you've got it there's got to be something you can find positive about it um, and if there's not be honest with yourself it's not my thing and move on yeah it's like the, it's like an it's like eclipse of the sun take a quick look and move on don't <laughs> stare at it for too long um, alright anyway that's me for now um, bye bye for, for this week um, please do come by to my Facebook page have a chat and tell me what you've discovered if you've discovered it this year I don't care if it's Celine Dion as I mentioned I don't really care what what you found or where you found it I'd love to know just what it made you feel um, did you re- react to the to the to the artist did you go and buy the product did you go and buy a t-shirt did you think of getting a ticket next time they're in your town this is the stuff I'd like to know anyway bye for now guys see you next week <laughs>